Rev up your engines. Martin Sue says, Scotty, I'm looking for my first car. Would a Lexus from the 90s to 2000 be a good choice? What should I look for and how can I get the cheapest insurance rate? Okay, well, Lexus has made great cars. My wife's got a 2002 ES300 I bought for four grand with 60,000 miles. Best car we ever had. If you can find one like that, they're very hard to find. Go ahead and buy one. Now, what you want to do is buy a four-cylinder one because the rates, the insurance rates in the United States, especially here in Texas, they go by engine size. You get a four-cylinder one with a smaller engine, the rates are going to be cheaper. And you don't want to go for a sports car because the rates are higher. So get a four-door. The insurance rates are cheaper on a four-door than they will be on a sports one. And just, you know, look around in price. They're very good cars. And uh, the lower the engine, the more sedanish, you're going to get lower insurance rates. Just how that works. Talim Soul says, I got a 99 Chevy Cavalier. It always overheats when I drive it over 60 miles an hour. Nobody can figure out why. Well, the mechanics you're going to are idiots. There's only really a few reasons it can overheat when you go over a certain speed. One is if your head gasket starting to wear, the faster you go, it builds up too much heat. I've got a video for that, how to tell if your head gasket's blown. You can do that test, and if it's starting to blow, the liquid in the test will turn from blue to yellow, then you know it's blown head gasket. If it's not that, you probably got a bad radiator. Radiator it dissipates heat. If you got an older radiator, when your engine goes faster and faster and faster, it builds up so much heat that a worn out radiator can't dissipate the heat. Now how you can test that is, you watch your temperature gauge, you go over 60, it gets high, quick turn your heater on full blast, then the heater is dissipating heat, now it's summer so it's hot, roll the windows down so you don't melt yourself, but if you find you turn the heater on then the temperature starts to go back to normal, you need a new radiator, that's a very good way of testing that, so I test them when I'm working on them. Brandon Kipp says, Scotty, my father has an 07 BMW X3. When you're going at a high speed and you slow down, it'll stall. I replaced the air filter less than 3,000 miles. Do you know why? Thanks. Okay, well, mainly it's a 12-year-old BMW and they fall apart when they age. But if you're going fast and you slow down and it stalls, it's got a problem in the idling system. And sometimes it's a very simple thing. You just need to clean it. I have a very good video, how to fix your car with a little spray cleaner. You buy two bottles of the spray cleaner and it costs you like 14 bucks. Follow the directions, it shows you how to clean it and it'll probably fix your problem because it's normally the throttle's got gunk on it or the mass sensor's got gunk on it and that shows how to clean them. Spray cleaner's gonna cost you maybe 14 bucks and you can do it yourself. If that doesn't fix it, it is a BMW and there's all kinds of sensors that could go wrong. Then you'd have to go to a BMW mechanic, charge you a ton of money because that's how BMW mechanics are. But doing the spray cleaner stuff, a lot of times it'll fix them. That one gamer says, my 90 Mustang has a problem with battery consumption. If we leave it connected over a lot, it'll be dead in the morning. Any tips? Sure, watch my video, fixing battery drain in your car. You got a battery drain somewhere and you can check it yourself. It's a very simple thing. You basically take off the negative battery terminal, you connect it with a little meter and you watch it. The meter shows there's drain, you pull out the fuses in your fuse box one at a time. And when the drain goes down, you know, that particular fuse, whatever it's running, has a shortness system. And if it's something you don't care about, like dome light, you can just leave the fuse out, you don't have to. But if you want to fix it, then you have to trace that whole system, whatever that fuse runs, to find out where the drain is. It's a pretty simple thing to do on an older car like that. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.